what's up friend you are you interested in lack of skill yeah or maybe some suck i'm just a new guy for the love of game wait don't go i know it's bad time to change but not my man don't you know the game's on my thing yeah I know it's getting real late. Come on, look at me. I even do storytelling. Also, podcasts on great game subjects. Okay, yeah, I'm not a Markiplier or a PewDiePie. <laughs> but hey, that's what makes me so unique, right? 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 Hey everybody, Nico here, also known as the well-mannered teenager, the snowflake, rambling idiot, and vigil. And how are we all doing tonight? How are you? How are you? Fanfare, please? Fanfare, please? Yes, fanfare. Fanfare! All the fanfare you could ask for. Titus, stop. Titus, stop. Alright, folks. Yeah, it's... It's been a while, hasn't it? And uh, I do. I just want to say in advance, I do apologize for that. Uh, it's been about a couple months since the last episode, and I just want to say thanks again for anybody who has been here watching the podcast or anything on the Nico channel. Uh, our most greatest milestone was getting over a thousand subs. Uh, you know, slow climb from there. But you know what? We got the, we got the goal. I don't care about anything else with YouTube. We're just kind of casually doing this uh, now. Today's episode is is a bit weird. It's a bit on the strange side. I don't know how long it's going to go. Um, if I have to do it in multiple parts, multiple parts I will. Because today we're kind of just... Uh, just like some previous streams before, um, on our road to a thousand, we were kind of just hanging out and just talking with other people on the chat and stuff like that. Except this time around, this is... I mean, this is pre-recorded as you're listening to it now, audio or seeing it on YouTube. Um, we are just going to hang back and just chill. And yeah, as the episode suggests, the title, is, we're going to go down Nico's journey, memory lane. We're going to throw in the RL aspect with Nico mixed in with uh, his, well, pretty much, yeah, the entire timeline of um, when I started playing video games to now. I might have in previous times, in previous episodes, have discussed that in, I don't know, any kind of shape or form, and I wasn't too, I, I wasn't tentative at all about this episode, because it kind of just struck me, and I was like, you know what, this would be a fun thing to talk about, I just want to just blabber on and hear my own voice, I guess, uh, as petty as that sounds. Um, so, the last two episodes we did were great interviews, with B Nap and Michael, you know those are great lo-fi artists. Check out those previous two podcasts. Those guys are amazing at what they do. They're great uh, artists, hip hop artists, that make beats, lo-fi, and all that. So I, I definitely recommend it. Um, so I, I mean, where do we begin on something like this, right? I'm not even going to really do any weird news, games I've been playing. Or anything. We're just kind of going to go right in. So uh, not too much fluff. Unless I tend to ramble a lot. Like I am now. Uh, but other than that. Yeah this is just pretty much straight to the point. Now I'll apologize in advance. If this is a very boring episode. Like I said it's a weird one. It's more casual and laid back. There, It's not as. Uh, it's not. To, it's not informative and anything that you would probably care about, but if you stuck around me long enough and you do care about what Nico has to say about his gaming timeline or game journey, whatever the fuck you want to call it, well, this is the podcast for you. So I hope you do enjoy. We're going to see how this uh, how this all plays out. I didn't rehearse or anything. As most things happen on the podcast, I just go with my gut here or whatever comes to mind. So like I said, feel free to check out the channel if you like some more to sub to it. And uh, I appreciate everybody. The links will be down below where you can find Nico anywhere podcast related. So thank you. All right. So let's get this little visual aid up there. Just kind of, yeah, I try to go with some kind of timeline collage like that of, you know, possibly some games that you played, some things that really meant a lot to you. And listen, I started playing video games since I was four years old, as much as, as 
far back as I can remember, okay? I'm 34 years old now. I was born in 1989, okay? So we go all the way back to what Nico remembers. Uh, I used to live in Missouri on a, on a farm for about eight years. Um, with the family and everything in the middle of nowhere type of place. The nearest town is like 20 minutes. And let's just say when I went to school there, the, the population of the town was so small that uh, all the, it was just all the grades in this high school. All of grade school, K through 12. Like it was one of those. So if you're familiar with that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I lived in a, in a, in a city called Stover, but in the outskirts, like 20 minutes away, uh, you know, my nearest neighbor was like two miles away compared to where I am living now in Florida, you know? So things were definitely, uh, stretched out on, you know, especially when we we're on tankers and land. So as a wee lad, I had two older brothers and my earliest gaming memories, we're just going to go now was it's interesting i've been spoiled my entire life especially with gaming uh growing up because two older brothers i got introduced to a lot of different gaming consoles especially early on uh for example i had the original nintendo the atari the latest one like the really cool one with the brown brown color scheme brown and black one of the later the latest ones and also a super nintendo so you can already imagine that's that's a lot of consoles to play. And it's like, how do you even do that as a kid? Well, if, you know, we were all kids once, so time seems to have slowed down quite dramatically to what it is now, right? Because, you know, you're just a new kid in the new world. You don't know what really time is and how it affects, you know, how it goes quicker, slower, depending on what you're doing. But everything's so new that your body hasn't even adjusted to that clock, you know, that that... You know, time, time flies when you're having fun or whatever you want to call it. So I don't know. It was, it was just whatever I wanted to play. I didn't have an N64 until 1998, 1997 when Star Fox 64 came out, but we're not there yet, but I'm just saying, uh, so we had these three consoles for a while and, you know, uh, my brothers were playing the original Nintendo and Atari when they were born in the early eighties. I was born in 89 so I didn't get to experience that until I was like four, uh, all three. Um, so we start with one of the first games I played, which was Mega Man 3 on the original Nintendo, which is a game I still play to this day, which has been on the Let's, Pl uh, Let's Play channel recently, so I recommend checking that out. <laughs> Shilling over. Um, Mega Man 3, of course, there's the Mario Brothers, there's The Legend of Zelda. You know, a lot of people had those games for the original Nintendo. Uh, so those were like my beginner games. I just say Mega Man 3 is the first game I've ever played. And I got addicted to it like any other, you know, first-timer games. Same thing with the Atari, you know, you got your Pitfalls, your Pac-Mans, you got your Space Invaders and all those games that we finally remember. You know, was playing a lot of that, even Pong. <laughs> I think we had Pong. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. Who didn't have Pong for the Atari? Um, and then the Super Nintendo. Oh, gosh. Uh, I don't even remember what our first games were for the Super Nintendo. I know I used to play the Living Daylights out of like pretty much all the games we had for the consoles. Like, for you know, sticking to the Super Nintendo was Mega Man X, Super Mario World, um, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter 2. NBA Jam, I mean, shit, you name it. Just name your favorite game that you used to, games that you used to play as a kid. That was like how it was for me. So I, had, like I said, I had these three generations. I had to just go back and forth and back and forth. And you know what? It was fine. It was great. I, it was just me playing. I played with my brothers. You know, we had a good time. There are times when I didn't play the games. I'd always be outside playing with my brothers or with the dogs or just you know, imagination land. You know, uh. Inside and out, you know, playing with action figures, watching movies, and you know, all the stuff that the kids do. The kids these days do. I didn't have, you know, you know, I, I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have anything, uh, anything high tech related besides a TV and the console and an IBM computer, which, by the way, that was also introduced early on to me, especially when Doom came out with its shareware. Uh, I was playing a lot of that. So, you know, if you want to um, include another platform, PC was also in the mix. So, like I said, I was very spoiled as a kid when it came to the gaming stuff and just as a kid in general because I was the last born. 
the final kid on the family tree, the rotted tree. I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, I didn't do what my brothers were doing, which was working on, they were working on the farm, like, like fucking slaves with my dad, just manual labor every single fucking day. The only thing I would do was harvest mainly nothing, anything construction related. And if anybody knows me in RL now, it, you understand it makes sense. Like my, my dad and mom didn't go as, as hard as they did with my parents, uh, parents with my brothers, my older brothers, when it comes to this stuff. Um, cause I was too young. I was, I mean, most would say, are you ever too young to learn something, right? Well, my parents thought so. My parents, shit, when my brothers would go out and, and, and hang with their friends and I wasn't hanging out with any of my friends at the time because you know, everyone's so far away, I can't get over there unless someone picks me up or I get dropped off because everything, my friends were far away uh, where we lived in Missouri. And my parents would both work full-time jobs. So I would be left alone in this 100-year-old house in the middle of nowhere, about a three or four-story home, 10 acres, 10 acres of land, just by myself with the elements. <laughs> nothing ever, and I promise you, no, and I swear to God, nothing ever bad happened to me during those times. Someone could have easily kidnapped me or killed me or anything. Nope, nothing ever bad happened. But if you get where I can be this, uh, where if anybody knows me in RL, where I have this kind of lone wolf behavior or independence, whatever you want to call it, like I, I'm living alone right now, technically, but that's where I get it from. I was trained that way. So I had to, I had to kill time. Like I said, video games were on there going to imagination land outside, just playing on the playground or playing basketball, action figures. I mean, you name it, you name it. Um, but playing these games, you know, uh, I, I just, just had a blast. I was so addicted to these games. How could I not be? I, I was just introduced to this addictive behavior early on. And you know what? I don't regret that at all. You know, as a kid, I loved every second of it because I still have countless memories of that, of playing all kinds of games, Mega Man's, Zelda's, Mario's. I mean, those, the Atari games, the Super Nintendo games, and they were all fucking hard as hell games, you know. I, I used to rent games all the time for those consoles and stuff and just had a blast. So I, I had a pretty big arsenal. Um, and I, yeah, I would never in a million years go back and be like, huh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. No, I like where I'm at in life right now. I really, I really do. I really do. See, this is the type of conversation we're going to have people, <clears throat> but it's all relevant to when I get from 92, 93 to nowadays, you know, uh, of what I'm doing now, like, especially now I'm talking to you on a, to a microphone. I'm losing to a rug. Um, so, we played those consoles for a while, got more games, rented more games, and then uh, th those were all my brother's consoles, okay? I think the Atari was my dad's, maybe? I think? Or my mom's? I don't know, but the original Nintendo was my brother's. You know, that came with a Duck Hunt bundle. The Super Nintendo was my brother's. Now, coming to the N64 era, like I said, there was a big, just huge period of just playing those consoles until the N64 came out. Now, when that console came out, of course, on TV, you would see the commercials for Mario 64 and uh, all the beginner games, Pilot Wings, Cool Boarding, uh, 007, Golden Knight, you know, uh, Ocarina of Time. But especially Super Mario 64, that's a game that I have never owned in my entire life until the Mario 3D All-Stars came out for the Switch last year. Was it last year or the year before? I don't remember. Uh, that's the only time. I have never owned that game, but I used to rent it all the time and I 100% it. And I I always remember that fondly. That was a good time, uh, which is kind of crazy at 100% a game when you're, uh, what is it? Oh, I got an N64 for in two, uh, 1997. So I was eight years old. Yeah, I was eight years old. I didn't, I got the, it was for my birthday. Eight, yeah, eighth birthday. I got the Star Fox 64 bundle, okay? So if you remember... Do you remember N64 is when they started inventing the Rumble Pack, the Memory Pack, and Expansion Pack, all this pack bullshit, but uh, the Hey You Pikachu Pack, Jesus, that was a cool looking controller though, but yeah, I got the Star Fox 64, uh, N64 bundle, and let me tell you folks, it felt good having your own fucking console, even though my dad paid for it, 
paid for it. And you know those consoles weren't fucking cheap in the 90s. No fucking way. Those were expensive fucking pieces of tech. Uh, um, mm. If you uh, add inflation to the mix, oh my God, it just makes it even higher. Makes it way higher. Way fucking higher. It's nuts. So, yeah. We didn't go the PlayStation route. We just went the Nintendo route because that's what I grew up with and that's what I wanted because those games that I played early on, I was getting the 3D version now of like the Zeldas, the Mega Mans, uh, whatever, right? Star Foxes. And man, the N64, which I still have, was one of my favorite consoles of all time owning because I don't mean to tap the desk so much because my brothers and I and friends and their brothers, friends and their friends and friends of friends, whatever we played the living fuck out of that console. And it wasn't just because of the fun games. I mean, that was a huge part of it, but it's because it was four players. Like the N64 was the console to have. If you had a lot of friends, enough friends, and then you wanted to play four player games like, and oh, the N64 had plenty of single player games, don't get me wrong, but holy shit, it was the fucking party console, man. With your 007s, with your Mario Karts, with your uh, Perfect Darks, with your Conker's Bad Fur Days, like all those great games, Star Fox, Wrestling. That shit was just nonstop. Super Smash Brothers. The N64 was monumental for many reasons. And I still think to this day that the N64, this is just in my humble opinion, as stupid as that sounds, the N64, I believe, aged a lot better than the PlayStation did, especially if you're comparing like the OG, like year one N64 games to PlayStation. God, like the Tomb Raider games. Holy shit, dude. Holy shit. Now I understand the PlayStation came out a year earlier than the N64, at least in the States, right? 95, 96. Um, but goddamn, a lot of those PlayStation 1 games, like the Crash Bandicoots, the Spires, oh my god, they're hideous looking. But when I go back and look at uh, Mario 64, Star Fox, and all that, they look great still. You know, you may make fun of them how they're blocky or something, but at least I can see they're clear blocks instead of just this fucking fuzz effect on every character model or what I'm looking at in every like PlayStation 1 game, year 1, year 2, or whatever. But that's, that's how, how it's always been. I didn't own a PlayStation until a PS2 came out. I didn't own a PS2 until the PS3 came out. I never owned a PS3. I didn't own a PS4 until 2017. <laughs> I didn't own a PS5 until like a year later. That's when I finally realized, I'm like, oh, I should probably get that instead of the new Xbox. Anyway, let's go back. So the N64, like I said, we had just played hours and hours and hours. My favorite games for the N64 was Star Fox, was fucking ocarina of time if you want to talk about a kid who did absolutely nothing but play that fucking game that was the most prized possession game and still is to the, to, i still have the game to this day that game was so fucking crazy playing for the first time it was so big expansive it was amazing it was beautiful it was just awe-inspiring you know I know anybody who doesn't play video games and they're listening to this probably think I'm a big fucking nerd. Well, it's true. I am a big fucking nerd. I probably sound really stupid, but I'm telling you folks, think about, just think about the most just immersive experience you had in your life and you got sucked right the fuck in. That's how it was, you know, when kids are playing these games and how, when I was playing Zelda Ocarina of Time, <laughs> I'm telling you, when I beat that game like a bazillion times, I would just go out and adventure and come up with my own stories and stuff. That was just fun to do. I even would talk out loud for these characters and dub over them. Like, I was all about it. Of course, I would do that when nobody was home because I had nothing else to do. I just had to live in, the, in these things to stay distracted and not scared and alone and afraid. Uh, coyotes would get me or, or sexual predators. Yeah, that shit would not be pretty. But, oh man, folks, we were just, I was just living up the dream. Um, and, you know, I would still go back and play this. Well, actually... We sold the Super Nintendo, I, I guess, which, oh God, I wish we never did that. I think it was to help get the N64 though. I don't even know how much money we made off of it. We didn't sell all the games. I don't know what happened. I think we just took them to a swap meet or something and someone bought it. I, I don't remember because I remember some of the cartridges had price tickets on them, especially the original Nintendo games. Dude, I still have Mega Man 3. There's no way I'm getting rid of that. But that was on the list to get sold. So we were selling old Nintendo games and all that. And uh, yeah, that was a shitty early purge to do. We still have the original Nintendo console. But going back to the N64, um, 
you know, oh my God, it was just so much fun. And that fun lasted until I moved to California because my dad got a job transfer because he's an engineer uh, for Boeing. I think, yeah. And so we moved back to California. I lived in California for a year when I was a baby. We lived in, this, in a place called Tahunga outside of LA. Uh, I should have said that in the beginning, but whatever. Um, so but I don't remember shit, but I finally get to go back to the homeland, the birth, birth land. And we lived in Irvine, California for about three and a half to four years, you know? So it was, you know, we didn't move out of there till like 03. So we were still playing the N64 like hella a lot. Like a lot still Mario Party, Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, Star Fox. All those games are still being played day in and day out. It didn't fucking matter. Um, now, uh, in, in Missouri, when we moved out, I, I had a, a few good friends, but I never really stayed in touch with them. Uh, and this is important why I bring this up. So <clears throat> we're getting to the good stuff. Oh, I can't forget playing my mom's brick Game Boy. That, that was also a, a side thing that I would do. Or you would just try to find a lamp and see where the fuck you're going. I always played Castlevania uh, Adventures 2 or Belmont's Quest or something. Belmont's Revenge. I don't know. Kirby and Metroid 2 and stuff like that. But I wasn't so gung-ho on that. That's probably why I didn't mention it before. I completely forgot. But that's about to change, ladies and gentlemen. Because before we moved, I... uh, Like I said, this is all fragmented memories I'm trying to piece together here. Eh, No rehearsal. The Game Boy Color I got. I got the Game Boy Color before we moved. I got the the turquoise one. God, I wish I still had that. Before we moved, I, for the first time, this is something that changed my fucking life, and it still, to this day, means a world, the world to me. Pokemon, okay? (laughs) And South Park is in this mix, too. That rental store, you know, that I've been going for the past seven years, six years, five years, whatever you want to call it, however long, they, I remember on the shelf, there was a, as soon as I walked in the store, there was a uh, new arrival shelf to the left of me and it had two VHS tapes. It was Pokemon. The episodes were Ash meets Charmander, Bulbasaur and Squirtle. And then right next to it was South Park. The first few episodes. I rented both. My parents had no, I mean, I had no idea what South Park was back in the uh, the nineties. Oh my god! Parents didn't know. They never knew that South Park was this fucking disgusting, or you know, full of swears and all that. And yeah, I was introduced to South Park and Pokemon pretty much at the same time, which is fucking nuts. But Pokemon. Ever since I watched those videos, th- that uh, rental, it had, that was the start, ladies and gentlemen. Now. As we get to moving to California, when we first moved there, I found out that there were Pokemon games, okay? Besides the N64, I just had my own Game Boy. I found out that Pokemon Blue and Red was out. But that's not all I found out. Besides the TV show, besides the game, there was the Pokemon trading card game. Oh my fucking God, I was so obsessed with Pokemon at that time. I was so fucking obsessed. I was watching the show. I was playing the fucking video games, which I would fucking never be able to put down. Because it was so addicting and, and oh my god. Anybody who's played Pokemon knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's that first Pokemon experience. It was fucking nuts. Um, and then playing, collecting the cards. And I still have, I still have my blue version. I still have a lot of the Pokemon cards that I collected as a kid. And I will only sell them if I get like such a high bid price at an auction or some shit. But ladies and gentlemen, Pokemon has always been with me. So, for the remainder of this discussion, Pokemon will always be a part of this discussion in the background, in the foreground, somewhere. Even if I don't bring it up, it was always being played. Besides besides a big period of time. <laughs> besides like a three to four year gap, maybe even five years, shit. I don't even remember exactly. But, got the Game Boy Color, playing Pokemon, playing the N64. Oh, and then, uh, what was the next console we got? I think it was the, yeah, it was the Dreamcast. So, I remember faintly when we got the Dreamcast. Now, that console was pretty fucking cool. You were playing your Soul Calibers, your Mortal Kombat Golds, your Power Stones, your Shenmue's. Oh my god, dude. There was your sort of Berserk games. <laughs> I played that without even knowing it was Berserk. And now, Berserk is literally my favorite manga and, and form of entertainment. But that's besides the point. So, um... 
God, the Dreamcast. Still have that console. Still have that console. We had all kinds of games. I forgot to mention we had a lot of sports games for uh, for that as well. Um, that was a, that was a lot of fun to play. Um, not as fond of memories as playing the N sixty four and um, what came before, but it was still it was still fun. I was still addicted to that. And like I said, I was still playing Pokemon. Pokemon Yellow uh, Pikachu Edition came out, Yellow version, and then Pokemon Gold and Silver. Oh my fucking god! I like the Game Boy was with me everywhere I went, folks. Everywhere I, w- I was in California, besides when I went to elementary school because they didn't allow that. But that bad boy, the Game Boy, was so convenient to have on you, and it was so fun to play around wherever I was living. Not even in the house, like in the complex, you know that near neighborhood and just enjoy mother nature while playing this fucking video handheld game dude pokemon was nuts um now you know there uh, what was the last n64 game i got i don't even remember um but yeah the dream case the dreamcast came out uh we played that for a while and then lo and behold uh now here's a fond memory of, of the n64 when i was in california so there's a little game called pokemon stadium like I said, I was addicted. Now, you want to know how I saved up my own money? Well, I say it's my own, but it was really my dad's. This is how it happened. My dad would, my dad was pretty frugal with his money, pretty cheap. Um, he would give me like $2 a day for lunch. Two fucking dollars a day. But hey, I was able to get lunch and that was it. A lot of times I would mooch, mooch off my friends because it was for me, I was just a hungry grown boy. And the main reason was is because I would I for a whole month I saved up lunch money to get Pokemon Stadium because I remember seeing that at, at Target at the time and you could play it and it had the Rumble Pack and you know what else it had besides it being a Pokemon game the fact that you can plug in the the, the Pokemon transfer pack it came with and play like blue and red and silver and gold and yellow or yellow version or uh which yeah Gen one to Gen two on your TV screen it was fucking awesome. So, I got that, which was fucking awesome. And after our second move in California, we lived in Irvine, right? Orange County. Uh, We moved to like three different places total, right? So, the final place was this place called Shadow Oaks in Irvine. Nice community, expensive as fuck. It was next to Irvine Valley College. So, anybody who's past Irvine or lived in Irvine, California, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Shadow Oaks. I don't know if it's still there or not. It's been a while since I've been there. But I met... Besides meeting people from my previous neighborhood and uh, people at school, which elementary school sucked. Oh my God, it was a nightmare, fourth through sixth grade. It was a lonely and I got bullied a lot. I don't think many people liked me. I don't remember if I was just an asshole or something. It's hard. It's hard to remember those days. I'm pretty sure we were all just pieces of shit. So um, what was the, uh, I met four brothers. Okay. There was, I'll go from youngest to oldest. It was Chad, Ian, Nathan, and Christian. And at this complex in Shadow Oaks, we had, uh, my brothers and I would go to the hot tub. We had a pool, gym, hot tub, uh, community center type place, a club room, right? Oh, it was awesome. Um, so, such a nice place. It wasn't even that big of a, of a complex either. It was just the perfect size. It was like a little piece of heaven, right? Isolated piece of heaven, gated community. But it had a hot tub and a big fucking pool. And I remember we just got in the pool and they met, my brothers met Christian first. And then um, I got introduced to the, him, Christian, and then his three younger brothers, Chad, Ian, and Nathan. And at that very moment, folks, at that very moment, on that night, starry night, steamy night, <laughs> not to sound gay or anything, but that's when I was pretty much best friends right away with these kids. Um and uh, hey, if you guys are uh, listening, friends of old, thank you very much. Um, I'm also not going to dog you when I say this, but these were the dirtiest. Well, I wouldn't say the they were the dirtiest, but they had the dirtiest house because, okay, well, I don't know about Christian, but the, the younger brothers, they were pretty messy. They would leave shit everywhere, stuff in the dishes, never wash, dirty laundry everywhere. Just, oh my God, it was it was a messy house and their mom would just be like, clean this shit up, clean this shit up. I don't think she would say that verbatim, but that's pretty much what it was like. And I, you know, she would have to come home to see that every day. But hey, besides that, besides, besides that, I was always with those guys from fourth or fifth through sixth grade or whenever I moved to Florida in 03. 
for the three and a half and four years I was in California, I was like attached to the hip of those three. And, and I was good friends with Christian too. I grew, I grew up with these kids for a, a small period of time. And we would do everything. All the stuff that I mentioned that I did in Missouri, you know, going outside, playing action figures, going on adventures and all that. It was like that in California with these guys. We played video games all day and night. We'd be outside all the fucking time, playing, doing box forts, going to the store with $5 and buying all the candy and snacks, going to McDonald's and all that shit, uh, exploring this big ass, like, reten- not a retention pond, but like a, a drainage ditch, but it was huge. It was a huge ditch with sand at the bottom. So, uh, we used to just fuck around in that place and just explore too. And, um, uh, oh my God. So a fond memory of Pokemon stadium with them. We're coming back to Pokemon stadium. I remember <laughs> we used to build box forts, which was really fun. You know what? No one ever gave us a hard time. I think because we were just young kids just having a, just playing outside. Didn't, didn't fuck with anybody. We weren't hellions. We were just hanging out, doing whatever came to mind. And I remember we made a, we were at, I was at their house all the time. They were at my house all the time, but I preferred being over there because I couldn't stand hanging out with my dad because he's an asshole. <clears throat> um, we brought, we put, made a box for it and their tiny ass patio. And then one of the brothers would play a Game Boy in there with Pokemon. I would be playing on the big screen, a Pokemon stadium with a, with playing like blue on it. And then another brother would be playing on his Game Boy of Pokemon. So it was like, it was a three-way Pokemon fucking like low key kind of land party type thing. And it was fucking awesome. That was a great memory. That was, I, I like, I remember just having the best time of my life, but we would do stuff like that all the time playing super. And, and with these kids, I was introduced to a lot of games. Okay. A lot of games that I never played on the super Nintendo, the original Nintendo, the N64 and Last but not least, the PlayStation 1. These guys got me into it because they were all into it, especially the, uh, especially Christian, the oldest brother. We would play the living fuck out of all that shit. I was introduced to Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross, Final Fantasy 3. I mean, just, just a lot of RPG greats. Um, I think a rocket's going off. Maybe? Baby, are we? Are you still? Are you here? All right, I'm gonna pause it right here. Pause. All right, sorry about that. Well, there's gonna be a jump cut, but man, it just kept going. That's just the price I pay for living in Florida, especially when rockets go off like two to three times a week. And I know it sounds cool if you've never seen them before, if you're visiting in Florida. But man, I've been here since '03, and I am just like tired of it at this point. <laughs> Even more so because it just keeps happening. Okay, so where was it? Oh yeah, so great Pokemon Stadium memory. And you know, guys, just all the I just there's so many memories I can go through with this on like stuff I played and experiences I've had with these friends I grew up with in, in Irvine. Uh, just think of all the unique, interesting things you did when playing these games with your friends, like whatever it was. You know, like I how I just mentioned in that Pokemon Stadium example. I'm sure you have. I'm sure you guys who played games your entire life have stories like that with your friends that you've done that were kind of weird but awesome, or just hanging out and just playing games all day and night. Like I'm telling you, we played all kinds of different uh, on all consoles. It didn't even fucking matter. It's whatever whatever we were in the mood for. Seriously. Um, now, during this time as well, the original Xbox came out in 2001. So when 2001 came out. That was a big deal for my brothers because they really wanted this console. And I'll never forget this day. I remember my brother rode his bike all the way to Target, which is about 20 to 30 minutes away. So not bad. And But he went to go pick it up. Uh, I can't remember if it was at that Target, Dead or Alive, and, or, and Halo. I, I want to say one of the games he couldn't get, like Halo or Dead or Alive 3, and he had to go to another store to get it. But... In the end, he had to ride his bike back. I remember he came back before I went to school. And he's like, uh, my brother called him and said, hey, uh, make sure nobody touches this. Like, nobody could touch it until they got home from school. And I remember seeing it. I was like, damn, I have no idea what the fuck this Xbox is, but this looks fucking cool. So we'll get back to the Fosters in a second. Um, By the time they got home, 
Uh, let's just say as soon as we open the box and put plug the console in, and, <laughs> uh, let's dude just every day playing Halo, Halo One and Dead or Alive Three, every fucking day, dude. It was insane how much we played of that game. So uh, Q in the fo- uh, my friends I grew up with, Chad, Ian, Nathan, and Christian. Uh, this is when LAN parties started to become a thing. Remember those? Besides playing on PC, but console LAN parties, those didn't really exist back in the day until the original Xbox just, holy shit, just made that a fucking reality. Instead of having big-ass computers to worry about, you just had a big-ass Xbox. <laughs> I remember kids would complain about how big that console was as like a way to diss it because, man, I had to deal with console war, like snot, Snot bags. There was a lot of snotty kids in Irvine, California, because it was a rich city, a rich, rich kid town. And man, these kids were just such snot bags about the Xbox. And I was like, who fucking cares how big it is? You have a computer, right? You don't bitch about that. Anyway, it's stupid. I remember hearing the PS2 has more games, and I always say, but who did you do you play them all? I'm like, no, it's quality or quantity. But anyway, it doesn't matter because they both had great games on them. Who fucking cares? So. The Fosters and my brothers and I, we would face each other all the time in Halo. With LAN party, Halo, 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 all the fucking time. And you know well, you know as well as I do, folks. Uh, we were playing multiplayer, no shit, but the same multiplayer that everybody else was. Rocket Wars, sniping fun, King of the Hill with infinite grenades and throwing ro- and shooting rockets, and dude, it was just amazing because the. Vehicles were indestructible, so, for example, Rocket Wars, oh, I don't know, you just get in a Warhog and you just pray that somebody shoots you and you flip out flip in, out of existence because it was, the physics were so funny in that game. Um, but, dude, my brothers and I were fucking elites, man. We got really, really fucking good at that game. And I'm telling you, really good. I'm not as good as I was on, like, on the Master Chief Collection because I don't think it plays the same way, my opinion, you know, because it's updated, modernized. I'm telling you, the OG, man, we did not fuck around in that game. We were killing it. Killing it. Um, But, dude, great times. Great fucking times playing Halo. And I've been playing Halo ever since, you know, since day one. Since day one. Isn't that fun to do? You played a series since day one of its release. And you grow with it over time, you know? Um, So I'm trying to think if there's any other significant memories. Oh, 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 of course. Of course. How could I forget? So... I have three favorite games. When I was a kid, the first two was Mega Man X and, um, what is it? Mega Man X and Ocarina of Time. Okay. Those were my favorite games that I would play the living fuck out of that I would hundred percent and know all the secrets and everything. I would be able to, it would be games. I would be able to speed run. No problem. After I de a little bit, but then number three was coming into sight. And this is my number one game. And you know, I mentioned how I was introduced to final fantasy. Well, The one that stuck with me ever since and has been just an amazing game since day one. I fucking love this game to death. Final Fantasy IX was the game, the pinnacle Nico game, where it just had all the check boxes, uh, all the boxes checked off. Everything. Music, graphics, characters, the story, the gameplay. Holy fucking shit. This was just a kid's imagination in one game. Now, I know many of you would play Final Fantasy VII. That's your favorite, or eight, or anything before. But for me, nine was the fucking jam. Jam. And <clears throat> and then also Chrono Cross was a huge, huge, like, uh, impact on uh, on games that I loved, you know? Um, now, keep that in mind. There's something cool about Chrono, uh, Chrono Cross. Um, you know, like I said before, I was introduced to Chrono Trigger, which took some really hard convincing and some manual labor to help out with the older brother because it was his game. He wouldn't let anyone play it. And then he deemed me worthy after whatever. I don't know. I earned his respect somehow. <laughs> but holy shit, Chrono Trigger was fucking awesome. But I was more fond of Chrono Cross. Something about Chrono Cross I was just so addicted to. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it fucking was, but I was playing that more than Chrono Trigger. So, Final Fantasy IX, Ocarina of Time, and uh, Mega Man X. And I've talked about this before. The top three greatest games of all time for me. Those will always stay in that that order every single time. I'm telling you. There are other games that I played hundreds of hours on. If 
if that makes sense as a kid. I don't remember. But these are the top echelon. And everybody's got their favorites, their top three, which is hard to do. But I will always stick by these games no matter what. I don't even care. Like, I love Twilight Princess. It's my favorite Zelda game. But Ocarina of Time will always be on there due to nostalgia reasons. But it's still aged well. It's still a fun game. Just like Mega Man X is still a perfect fucking game to me. And Final Fantasy IX to me is a perfect game or, or a masterpiece, you know? Everybody knows exactly how I feel. Everybody has gone through that same, same, you know, turn of events. So with that in mind, um, my dad and uh, some dark times happened. My parents got a divorce right before my dad got a transfer to here, Florida, where I've been in uh, since 03. Now, as a going away gift, my, uh, my good friend, I was best friends with these four brothers. I'm telling you everything we did together <clears throat> besides bathing. <laughs> uh, he gave me his Chrono Cross copy before I moved. And I remember exactly the time and place where I was. I was just like, no fucking way. He gave me his Chrono Cross copy. Little did he know that it was broken, so I had to buy a new one, the greatest hits version. It was it was super cheap, though. Um, yeah, little did I know. And then, of course, of course, when I moved to Florida, I, I, was it before or after? I bought Final Fantasy IX, of course. I Fuck, dude. Because I was still playing the living shit out of that. I was playing Final Fantasy IX, Chrono Cross, and Final Fantasy VII a lot. A lot. Trust me. Um, and then, of course, you know, Breath of Fire 3, but not as addictive as I was to those games I just listed. <clears throat> but, yeah. Uh, what, what's our time? Okay, I'll go for like another six minutes and we'll wrap it up because this will definitely be a part two. I'll start with the beginning chapters of uh, being in Florida. Um, now, anything that I forgot... For memory's sake, that's fine. We're just going down the list. I'm trying to do as best as I can. Um, there's just so many memories, guys. So many memories, and they all kind of blend into mold into one giant memory, you know? So it's hard to, you know, take pieces here and there. But just honestly, if you've been playing games since as long as you can remember, you know exactly where I'm where I'm coming from. And this is why I, I, like, I like talking about this. You know what? Let's... Let's just do conclusions now and do part two when I when I go to Florida because, you know, there's a lot to unfold here. So this is what I'm talking about, though. These are games that, it, like, I've always had great gaming memories and I still do, although it's very seldom. You know, it's very hard to find those great games. But in recent memories, it's been Baldur's Gate 3, uh, Breath of the Wild, and Skyrim, you know, in the past decade, you want to call it, or a little over a decade. But, man, those games, when I first remember playing video games on the, on the Atari, the, the original Nintendo, Super Nintendo, the N64, man. Like, there's a reason why I won't ever sell my N64. I would never do that in a million years. Because that's, that's my childhood, man. That's like my fucking memories, man. And I get pretty sentimental with that stuff. I, sentimental value to me is worth piles and piles of gold, okay? You know, like the world's greatest treasure. I know it sounds silly because it's a piece of electronic, you know, electronic equipment that I can just replace easily. But it's the history. It's like aged wine. You know, wine gets better every time, every year it ages or every day, every second, every moment. And it's like that with these with these memories of, of these great games I play with, not just me, with friends in, in Missouri, friends in California, my brothers, the uh, just anywhere on the PC, on the Dreamcast, on the original Xbox, the PlayStation. Oh my God, dude. Like, like I said, I was, I had a pretty good upbringing when it came to that stuff. I was dabbling in all kinds of games. If I had a friend that said, Hey, check this game out. I would play it. Hey, let's, let's play this game together. I would watch them play it. I don't, I don't mind watching people play games. I mean, by the way, I make money off of you know, playing games and people watching me off Twitch and I watch other people play games. So it's been something that's been, you know, with me ever since I was a wee lad. Um, and I don't mind it at all. Um, I mean, I remember the countless, you know, breaking controllers of the Super Nintendo because Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter 2 would just drive me fucking mad, especially playing against my middle brother. Him and I were pretty competitive with that stuff. He would get more angry than me. He was fiercely competitive. But uh, I was competitive too he doesn't know but um as a kid i used to be afraid to make him mad if I, he would lose in the game uh, especially when we were playing smash brothers uh alex are you listening 
Uh, some of the times if I let you win in the original Smash Brothers, because, well, I let you win because I didn't want you to get super mad at me and start giving me dead legs. So this is all your fault. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Revelations. Oh my God. I still have my, uh, my Smash Brothers game. But oh, I even told you about the Great Purge. Now, there was a great, that's going to be part two, the Great Purge of Nico, which, oh my God. I already told you about a previous purge, but that wasn't my purge. My brothers purged their Super Nintendo and their games for the most part and the original Nintendo games that we had. I'm telling you, never, ever, I'm telling you, never trade in a console. I don't care if you don't play it anymore. Never trade it like games in general unless you absolutely, absolutely can't stand this fucking game get rid of it fine but if it's a game that you played a lot of hours in it and you haven't touched it since you were like 10 don't even fucking think about it okay <coughs> don't even think about trading that shit in because that's a mistake trust me uh it'll all make sense on part two whenever that happens so folks we have gone through nico's life of the timeline of 1989 to 2003 now that's a lot of years to cover and like I said, I could talk about all the memories of every single game I've dabbled with, but I just try to come up with the ones that stick out to me on the fly. Um, maybe I'll think of some more on the next part, but hey, if you stuck around with me this long, I appreciate it. I will, if, you're, if you're listening, I would love to hear your greatest gaming memories down in the comments below. Uh, if you're listening on, on Spotify, check me out on my other platforms, join the Discord, uh, check me out on YouTube, blah, 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 you know, uh, yeah, shameless plugs here and there. Um, and as I said before, I'm sorry that it's been taking me so long to release these podcasts. It's, it's just a motivation thing. Ever since I made it over a thousand subs, I haven't been really caring too much on YouTube for Nico the Legend because I put so much work on this channel. You have no idea how much time I put into this fucking channel. Maybe you do if you're a big time content creator, but you understand where I'm coming from. You just get burnt out and you're like, you know what? I got this milestone. I'm good. Now, uh, the Let's Plop, that's the Let's Play stuff that I used to do uh, with my my good room best friend Deal on a different channel. I brought that back like a year and a half ago that I've been doing. So check out Let's Plop. Got over 400 episodes on there of whatever games you, you might like. That's a good time. That's where my time's mostly spent on because I just enjoy playing and recording and making stupid jokes with friends over just solo YouTube content. And, you know, I have special guests on the podcast, which is great. Uh, all the people that have been on the podcast previously, fucking awesome. I've all been great guests. I haven't had one shitty guest. And I might m- might be getting uh, Carolyn on the show. She's just been super fucking busy. She's supposed to be my co-host, but like I said, life happens. And then a new person, a, new, uh, a comic book artist, creator, also musician. Uh, I might get her on the show. I, I, I've asked the question. I, I, I posed the question, so I'm waiting for a response. So... Uh, her name's Kim, so keep that name in mind. I'd love to have her on the show. Anyway, folks, thank you so much for being here. It has been a great pleasure, and I hope you enjoyed this kind of weird laid-back episode of just going through Nico's life and game timeline and all that shit. Um, part two will happen, and we'll go from 2003 to however long, like an hour, 50 minutes to an hour, will take us, okay? Might, might even be a three-parter. And goddamn, video games were just a blast to play when you were a kid, man, compared to how it is now. God, I gotta worry about my hair falling out. Am I right? Am I fucking right? Hey, back pain? Knee pain? Shoulder pain? Oh my god, fucking shoulder pain, man. Don't work out as hard as I do. Ow! Anyway, folks, take care, Pathfinders. I shall see you on the next one.